Hello everybody at Fusion. Uh, this is a new tutorial to describe the various features we have customized in Lightning for Outlook. The add-in for Infusion 360 that we hope uh, everyone starts using soon. Uh, before we go ahead in this presentation, uh, I would like to uh, give you an advice as a best practice that whenever extensive you editing or changes have to be made in Salesforce or there are extensive tasks in Salesforce that you have to perform. Uh, please stick uh, with Google Chrome. The plugin is not a replacement for Google Chrome as such. So let's just jump right into the presentation. So the key features that we're going to discuss in this presentation are opening the plugin, adding emails uh, to Salesforce using the plugin, creating new records that is creating new opportunities tasks events and cases from within the plugin modifying the records um that is making changes to say phone numbers and other such details from within the plugin uh synchronization of events that is of uh, saving all your client meetings as such or other such events that you might have with clients uh, in Salesforce and Outlook together and they're going to be synced uh, and then there are a few other key important features that you need to know because it's generally just the best practices so let's stick with it. Uh, so opening the plugin so we're going to start with the basics obviously how we open the plugin as you can see, the plugin is already open, but uh, it's only going to be closed. So if you want to open the plugin, all that you have to do is go to the home ribbon. Then you click on the home on Outlook. And on the far right hand side corner, you should see a cloud. When you click on this, it would uh, open the plugin. Uh, for testing purposes, it was already open on my computer. But as you see, uh, it's an email from Arun. And Arun and the email of Arun has been added to dummy client. That's why um, all the related records for dummy client, that is accounts and cases that are going on for dummy client have come up as well. So here we go. The next thing that we are going to discuss is spinning the plugin. Okay. So it's this button. Now I have already kept it pin but it should always be like this okay so what this does is it keeps uh, the plugin open the sales for lightning for outlook plugin it is highly unrecommended that you do this because the time taken to load emails is far less than the time taken to load uh, uh, everything all the data and plugin that's because this is just an email that it's gonna be a few words and it's saved in a very and it's saved on your local computer while this is more or less a search page that is being generated from Salesforce so as a best practice it is not recommended that you keep it open always but if suppose you want to save a bunch of emails or there's some other tasks that you want to do or like for me right now I have to do this presentation so I'm keeping it pinned that is it will always be open this way but as a general reminder if uh, you think that the plugin is slowing down your outlook just unpin this and you should be fine so the next thing that we're gonna go through is adding emails um, it's pretty simple and the most basic feature that we're gonna have to use okay so uh, as you can see all the related cases were open and if you want to save an email all you have to do is click on this little arrow button which is actually pointing upwards which is actually an upload sign now. so suppose we want to save it on test messages it's a case on dummy client suppose we decide we want to save it here this is just click this we wait for it at times I did the truncated for size like your email was a truncated for size so that's that's, a, that's a something you have to worry about and as soon as you get a uh, success message as a green message that had popped up your email is 
going to get saved in the next 5 to 10 minutes or at times instantaneously so don't worry about it if you get a success message it will eventually be saved in Salesforce so and then and that's it that's all there is to adding emails and the next feature would be creating new records okay uh, so you can create new events tasks cases and opportunities by within this although as a better practice it could be better if you do it through the browser so now when we say create a new task here we go so we say trailhead tracker and we could just say Yeah, we can say trial attack or we create a task, we create a due date for it, say 16th of December, assigned to me, search contacts, and we relate it to. So we want to save it to a case, so cases. Let's just say a test case. Yeah, dummy case test. Okay, so save it to the dummy case status in progress priority below. So yeah, and when we say save. Although this will be saved, uh, at times there is a known delay, but it shouldn't happen more often than not. But at times it might take around five to ten minutes, or maybe at times half an hour, to upload these records in Salesforce and for you to be available in the browser. So just a heads up on that. So the next thing that we're gonna see is editing the records. Suppose we wanna make changes to a specific record. And okay, let's go back. Okay, so now we wanna make changes to suppose of uh, the Outlook test case here. We just click on it. We let the details page come up, and uh, we just click on this. Right here. So here we go, and. Yeah, that's it. You can change the name or anything you want. All uh, right, I won't make any changes because there's no need to. But yeah, if you want to change the name, you could do that. So you could change any of these fields. Okay. The next thing that we're gonna go through is is synchronization of events. Um. Okay. So. This is a tricky part. So what's gonna happen is all the events, and this can only be explained in straight talk to give a demo on this. But uh, what's gonna happen is all the events which are in Salesforce or Outlook moving forward are gonna be saved in each other. That is, suppose you create an event in Outlook, unless you mark it as private, it would be saved in Salesforce. And all the events you've created in Salesforce, they would come into your Outlook. This is just so that there is uh, to avoid double entries. Uh, so whenever you create an uh, event in Outlook, it might generally take a day or in Salesforce also to sync into the other one within a day. Uh, so going forward it would be a best practice that you create events all the events in Salesforce because uh, 
we want to create an option here. We get uh, the regarding field in. This is very important uh, to see all the records of the clients in one place, which would help us in the long term. Suppose we create with dummy, this would save it for dummy client because as you can see, we just say create, okay, new event. So we could say into contacts, a dummy client or Assigned to the Tigambi, and we could create this. Would be let's call it a uh, if this is not new business, maybe we could just do that, but we won't save it because it would affect or uh, we are still in production and. I just create a few things in the report so but if I would have clicked save here it should have it will generally save so there we go it's cancelling it out and that's how moving forward we hope events are created however for some reason if an event is already created in Outlook uh, try opening you'll have to go through your calendar and then no uh, again just modify the regarding field in salesforce which would not be recommended so let's just go uh, so, oh yeah so suppose okay now if you don't want a certain specific record to not be saved in salesforce you have to mark it as private like or suppose a certain meeting let me show you how it's done. Suppose you want meetings. So if you don't want this, uh, suppose I create a meeting and I mark this as private. Just click this, private. And then you send it as save. It won't be added to Salesforce. Otherwise, all your other meetings would be added uh, to Salesforce moving forward just remember this right hand side button in the meetings ribbon okay just right here above high importance okay mm. yeah then the search bar it's a uh, pretty similar to it's the search bar in your plugin is gonna throw similar results to the results you get on your Salesforce page so let's just say we do dummy we are you get top results accounts more and everything else I would recommend against using this but generally uh, suppose if the proper related account is not coming up then you could go to Acme dummy company and then maybe save it there so yeah that's it the next thing is the home page button Okay, it's very simple. This would take you. See this button? It will take you to the home page on your browser, but it would take you to the home page on your default browser. So I'm already logged in, so it should just, as you can see, it's taking me to the home page of my browser. That's it. Anytime you want to go to uh, Salesforce, yeah, just click on the button and you will be ending up there. So uh, let's just see what else we have. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, the channel note, I will re explain this. Please just use the plugin sparingly. It's not a replacement for your browser. And uh, if there are some particular needs that you need, always contact the admin for more. Thanks. This is Adi signing off. Bye.